What is defensive driving? Is it that I'm a good driver? Because most drivers would agree with that statement, regardless of where they live in the world, religion, or politics. Stick around. We're going to give you five defensive driving techniques that will make you a safer, smarter driver. The most important element of defensive driving is space management. You need to manage space around your vehicle, to the sides, to the rear, and to the front. And you can always, always manage space in front of your vehicle. And I know there's drivers out there that will say to me, oh, if I leave space in front, drivers will cut in. Yes, they will. But if they're cutting in, they're going faster than you and they will only be there for a couple of seconds and then you can reclaim your space. Always, always manage space in front of your vehicle. Have your two to three second following distance behind other traffic. And when you're stopped in traffic, always stop so you can see the tires making clear contact with the pavement. And when you're moving slowly in a queue, again, also never get closer to the vehicle in front of you so that at all times you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement. If you manage space well, you are rarely going to get into trouble when you're driving. It is the most critical skill that you can have as a defensive driver because the speed is going to take care of itself. It's like right now, I have a two to three second following distance in front of me behind this truck and I'm simply doing 50 kilometers an hour which is the posted speed limit or 30 miles an hour for those of you in the States. The Smith Space Cushion System developed and founded in the 1940s by Harold Smith indicated that if you manage space you have a place to drive out of if you get into an emergency situation which is correct because it's faster to drive out of an emergency situation than it is to brake. However, <laughs> roads are much, much busier than they were in the 1940s when Smith founded that system. So it's now more important that you manage space in front of your vehicle so that you can come to a stop and not get into trouble in case something happens in front of you. The definition of defensive driving is, is that you are making allowances, you have skills and strategies in place that are compensating for the errors of other drivers and also for when you make mistakes because we all make mistakes when we're driving. We lose attention, we get distracted by something on the side of the road or we're looking at something or whatnot. That's why it is so important to manage space around your vehicle to allow for the mistakes of other people and for your own mistakes that you may make when you're driving. So the most important element of defensive driving is managing space around your vehicle. Tip number two is situational awareness. Where am I? What is it? Who is it? <laughs> What's the weather outside doing? What's the outside temperature? Where am I at the intersection? I have to do a little jig jog here because I can't see past the traffic. There we go. So, situational awareness, being aware of what's around you, being aware of intersections, pedestrians right here at the intersection. I was slowing down and backing off for them. I've got somebody stopped here at an alleyway. <laughs> so there's a lot going on and you need to be aware of everything that's going on. And of course this vehicle in front of me didn't have the signal on but was waiting to turn into the alley. I didn't know that but I stay back, I relax, I don't get too close. Again, even if that vehicle stopped mid-block, I still stop back so I can see the tires making clear contact with the pavement. That way I'm far enough away that I'm less likely to hit something. So it's observation, but it's more than seeing. It's being aware of what's going on as you're moving through the intersections. Tip number three is what I call MIT, mapping an intersection and tracking what's going on at the intersection. This dovetails well with situational awareness. So I'm tracking, I've mapped the intersection. It's a complex intersection with left-hand turning lanes, advanced lights, slip lanes, pedestrians, cyclists. I got a cyclist over here, even in the winter time, <laughs> we have cyclists uh, riding around. So you have to be aware of that. The pedestrian's gone way up the sidewalk, cross traffic is going through, traffic has stopped, there's nobody behind me so I'm watching traffic coming up behind me at the intersection. Slip lane over there, I have a truck turning right and I'm turning left so I'm watching and I'm tracking that truck. The truck is gone, 
I've got my advanced green. So checking here, there's nothing here, there's no pedestrians. I'm tracking that car over there because it's turning right. And of course the car is gonna turn right in beside me. So I was tracking that vehicle as I was coming around the corner through the intersection and making the left-hand turn. Same thing here, I'm tracking the red car, moving up, the car is coming to a stop. Pedestrian over here on my left, Vehicle's coming through, I'm stopping be behind the stop line, the pedestrian is gone, traffic is coming through. I cannot see what's going on over there because there's a truck sitting beside me, as you can see in the dash cam. Vehicle on the other side of the intersection, pedestrian coming through the intersection, I'm tracking that pedestrian to figure out where that pedestrian is going. MIT, mapping the intersection and tracking the road users around at the different sections of the intersection especially those that are crossing your path of travel as you're going to move left through the intersection. So clear, the pedestrian is gone, the vehicle has come through, I'm clear to go, shoulder check and proceed through on the left hand turn. The vehicle's coming through, there's no, no, no road users at the intersection, so I'm clear to go. I don't have to slow down, I just have to map and track the intersection. Remember, it's important to locate the intersection map the intersection and track the road users that are at the intersection, especially those road users that are going to cross your path of travel. Because 40% of crashes occur at intersections. Tip number four, parking lots. If you can find a space which you can drive through into the next space so that you can drive out when you're leaving the parking lot, that is ideal. In parking lots, be sure that you go slow because there's lots of activity going on especially this time of year with the holiday season and whatnot. Track pedestrians, figure out where pedestrians are. If you're the least bit unsure, simply stop and wait for them to pass your vehicle. When backing out in a parking lot, be sure that you look first out the rear window before you move the vehicle. Check your mirrors, check your backup camera if you have one but make sure that you're looking out the back window before you put the vehicle in motion. Most bingle smashes and bashes happen in parking lots because people put the vehicle in motion and then they look, and by then it's too late. Tip number five, and probably the most important tip, check yourself before you wreck yourself. You have to have an attitude of defensive driving that I want to, I'm just going to let them go and have their crash somewhere else because people are going to cut you off. There's going to be drunk drivers, going to be poor drivers. There's going to be bad weather. All of these things are going to happen when you're driving. It's They're not unpredictable. <laughs> they are as predictable as that tomorrow we are going to get weather because the top two reasons for traffic crashes are failing to yield and following too close. Those two driving actions, failing to yield, failing to give way, and following too close are simply attitudes about driving. It's your attitude towards driving. And if you want to see the perfect film about Mr. Wheeler and Mr. Walker, a Disney character in the 1950s, that was about the very nature of the Jekyll and Hyde character that we become when we drive, have a look at that up in the corner. I'll put a card up there for you. They become this crazy creature, which is crazy. They follow too close. They fail to give the right away, and they believe that they have the right to go. For another video, click here. To subscribe, click here. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great day. Bye now. Mr. Walker owns a motor car and considers himself a good driver. <laughs> but once behind the wheel, a strange phenomenon takes place. Mr. Walker is charged with an overwhelming sense of power. His whole personality changes. Abruptly, he becomes an uncontrollable monster, a demon driver. Mr. Walker is now Mr. Wheeler.